I, I wonder what Gary thinks of that topic. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask him in a second here, what he thought of the topic that we asked Angelo, but also this Michael Parsons story is wild. I think, I think he's overrated. I do. I'm not paying $30 million for an edge guy. Okay. And let's bring Gary Cobb in right now. Um, Gary, there's, it seems to be true that the Cowboys right now, one of the reasons that they have like um, a zipper on their wallet right now is because they're either going to pay CD Dak or Micah and get this supposedly they're open to each and every single one of those guys in fielding calls on maybe moving one of those players <clears throat> for potential draft picks. Now, my my contention is, and Michael Irvin's contention is, is that they want to move off of Dak and they want to go Shador Sanders in next year's draft and draft him to replace Dak, and that's why Dak is on a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. That the Eagles... First and foremost, would the Cowboys trade? Now, if everyone forgets, and you have to remember, the Cowboys traded with the Eagles, if I'm not mistaken, and this is how the Eagles got Devontae and the Cowboys got Michael Parsons. Could you see something like that ever transpiring between the two? Well, you know, I, I guess, I mean, because, uh, you know, if, if uh, they feel like they're getting what they want, you know, uh, it's it's um it's something that's unusual when you got you know rivals, you know especially right now you know if you look at the division they're the two best teams, um, that's that's not really um you know anything to debate about. I mean they're clearly the two best teams in the division, so they're going head to head against each other. So um, a lot of times teams don't do business with somebody that is that close to them, you know, um, but. You know, I, they have done something, but I, I don't. I wouldn't say that. Um, you know, it's especially you know, I, I don't think either one of them wants to help the other team. You know, so, do you? How? Give me your assessment on Parsons. I think, if I'm not mistaken, you know the player a little bit. Yeah, I, I know him. I you know I met him when he was a, a fresh. Well, he was a freshman in high school, and the NFL had this thing where they. Um, brought them all into uh, Philadelphia over at the University of Penn. And and they wanted us to talk to the young players. And he was one of the guys they, they assigned me to talk to him, you know, and, and talk to him about what he needed to do because they could clearly see he had special talent. So I did, they identified all these guys. And I, I talked to him about, you know, of course, I'm talking to him about going to college, you know, and, and how he needs to make sure he's hanging around the right people, you know, don't hang around the wrong guys. You know, you get in trouble, things like that. But he, he was a good kid. I mean, um, you could see that. And, and most of the guys are. If they know they're good, it's a challenge to keep their head, you know, to, to, to uh, not not, not uh, think they're going to just rewrite everything. And he does have that type of talent. Uh, you know, but I think with the Cowboys, it's almost not a good thing because he, he it's just too much attention, you know. And... Uh, but I, I think he is. I mean, how do you think he's handling it? How do I think he's? Well, I, I just think that um, you know, I, I think he's having some challenge with it. Uh, you could see during games where um, he's just thinking of he wants to make a big play, and it, and it's a tough because everybody knows where he's lining up, wherever he's lining up. There, they got him circled and everything. So I I, I haven't heard anything that he's doing that bad, even though, you know, um, I'm not down there. I don't know what's going on with the, with his teammates and things like that, but, um, you know, I, I, he's a great player. I, I think at times he might try to do things and almost kind of trap himself, you know, because, uh, you know, he, he really is circled. I mean, teams do not leave him by itself, one on one with people, a lot of times. I they, think he takes themselves. things too personal when there's criticism. P probably so. Yeah, I, I think he. Yeah, you got to be able to just ignore it. And yeah, and, and I, I think as a, um, that he, that he tries to maybe respond too much to stuff. I, ignore it, man. You, you're you're taking care of somebody. You're doing what they want by reacting to whatever somebody said or wrote. You know, let it go, man. You know, 
as long as you handle your business and that's that's the shame about some of that i, I think there are a lot of young players who run into that and i must say that uh, when we played come on yeah you didn't have you didn't have to deal with all the social media True. you know and and the thing about it is they got to know look <laughs> if you respond to somebody that writes something you're doing what they want you just yeah. made the guy some money I absolutely 100%. See, but he doesn't know that and um you know especially you know you got some people that know what they're talking about come on there are a lot of guys out here don't know they don't know what they're talking about they just the guy's got to write an article he don't know uh, whatever the, he don't even know the size of the football or whatever <laughs> he don't know that, nothing about football but he's got to write an article and and if he responds to it he's doing the guy a favor um the signing of Avante Maddox is what to you? I think that uh, I don't think they probably gave him a lot of money. No, nope. he's been hurt. There's uh, only eight hundred seventy thousand dollars guaranteed. When, quite frankly, if you remember right, he was scheduled to make seven million bucks. Yeah. So I mean, I think he's like with one point three or one point two somewhere in there. So he's, he's I mean, been hurt. he's been getting hurt all the time. I mean. You got he's a, a good player. He's a good player. That's right. But he's got to stay healthy. I mean, you can't not have a guy where um, you're depending on a guy and, and he's never there. You, you know, you cannot keep investing in him. So I don't, I think he understands and hopefully they gave him some, um, some money there that where if, if he does play, you know, he's going to make more money, but I can't blame the Eagles if they're going like, we can't keep paying you. You're hurt all the time, you know, because he is a good player when he's healthy. He's smart. Uh, he's a guy who doesn't meet, mind going in there uh, and he will tackle in there. And, you know, a lot of, you know, the corners, come on, they don't want to tackle anybody. He will go in and tackle and he's a smart player and he communicates and he's a good team guy. Just got to stay healthy. But if he doesn't stay healthy, you know, you can't pay him. So, you know, Unfortunately, I know it's uh, it's hurt him, but I think they're being fair to him. Gary, it's been 10 days since the Reddick trade. And the reason I bring it back up again is because there's no contract extension from the Jets. I know. And think about this. So the Jets, I think, are the only people that win in this because I don't think the Jets are going to give him a contract extension, which would mean this. He plays out his year. At 15 million, and yeah. I'm gonna go somewhere with this here. And they draft an edge rusher, maybe the kid Dallas Turner from Bama. Mm -hmm. And they're at 10. They trade back and they 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 get the kid Turner or they get the kid verse from Florida State. They get a compensation pick of a third rounder. Now, where I'm going with it is is Devon Hardgrave. He was on a one-year contract, and the Eagles had made it very clear they were not going to bring him back. But mm -hmm. he played it out. Yeah. Why isn't Reddick on this team? And the Eagles just didn't do this. You're going to make $15 million. And get this, you don't even get compensation for three drafts from now. So it wasn't yeah. like you're going to get uh, uh, something in return here in 18 days for the draft. Yeah. You have to wait three drafts for that. It just – why did they make him play out the contract like they did Javon Hargrave, who signed the $20 million per annual deal mm -hmm. with the Niners? I'm still not getting this. I, I don't get it. You know, I, I told you last week, I mean, come on. He's helping the Jets this year. Oh, yeah. Okay, now if he's not going to be – At the same price. At the same price. I mean, if he doesn't get any money – that come on, this makes no sense. And the Eagles are a now team. You know, you see other teams, they're not now. They know they're not going to win anything now. The Eagles are coming in and going, look, look at our offense. That is a now offense, meaning we want to win now and we plan on winning now. We didn't we didn't sign all these guys to go through the motions. We think we can win this thing. And that's you know, mentality and everything. And I think if I'm on the team. I'm, I'm, I'm going like, you know, what are you doing? That makes sense. Come on. I mean, I you know, I know none of the guys are going to say anything publicly, 
But how could they not go, hey, look, you know, we don't know what these kids are going to do. Come on. You guys don't know what these kids are going to do. Even the new guy. It. What you, we're going to just give him away, and we get nothing this year, and we don't get anything to – we don't even get anything in 2025. It's 2023. No. Three fresh from now, you don't get anything. Come on. With And Reddick's paying – He's playing for the same money. Come on. He would have made. And, you know, people are now, they're coming up. Well, he would have held out. Why Hartgrave didn't? And and then, you know, I, I know this is a little, uh, little off the charts a little bit. But Hassan Reddick was doing things business-wise here in Philadelphia. And him playing here fits. He's from this area. He's he's going to be back here, you know, after the season. And look. He's, he's invested in this area. He would want to stay. And really, you know, it really kind of um, fits some of the things he's doing that he's here. So it, it doesn't make any sense. You know, now he's not that far away, but he was he was doing things here as an eagle and everything. And, and it was just it just opening the door for other things for him after he finished his plan. He's from this area. But you give him away, and, and that's what it is. That's giving him away. You got yeah. nothing for him. And we're trying to win now. You tell us it looks like everything else. Every You're trying to win now. That's everything you're doing. Look at the move you make. You, you sign Barkley because you want to win now. This is what you're saying. And then you go give maybe, you know, definitely your best pass rusher. You your give best defensive away. player. Come on. That, that makes no sense. I mean, they, they need to answer for that. Come on, what what is it? I, you know, I haven't heard the answer yet. What is it? I mean, don't tell me anything about this deal because you gave the guy away. Gave him away. Come on. I I I'm you know, and I was waiting. I was hoping that because again, Snead got a contract extension when the Titans signed him away from Kansas City. Even Joe Mixon, come on, got a deal. Um, when they traded for him with Cincinnati down to Houston, it just doesn't make it just sense. absolutely didn't make sense. All right, I want to ask, sense. I just asked Angelo this, yeah. and I want to get your perspective, like uh, from a sports talk view here, mm -hmm. and also I'm going to tie it into Jason Kelsey. Yeah, um, Caitlin Clark did not win the national championship in team sports. Do you believe you have to have that championship ring? to be considered one of the greatest players in the history of your respected sport? No, I, I, because, you know, you can be that great and, um, and, you know, and you don't get enough help. I mean, I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I, unfortunately I didn't see that game. I didn't see the game. You know, I saw her. I mean, I, I the, the, the girls from a different planet. I mean, I mean, she's 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 the chick version of Steph Curry. I mean, that's 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 what you got. I mean, you know, come on, nobody shoots from out there, and you're talking about in the the ladies, and she just some I mean, of it's half court almost. I mean, come on, bottom, just she lets it go. You can see, and then you see her 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 working out, and you go, my goodness, this is her range. I mean. She's, you know, when she lets it go, she knows it's bottom. So, the goof was that her range is when she stepped into the arena. I mean, that, hey, it's about <laughs> that. I, I know, come on, I've never seen. Well, you know, come on, be fair to her. Come on, most of the guys in the NBA, they could not shoot with her. Come on, the girl can shoot. Anyway, uh, okay, what, what was I getting ready to say? Yeah, I mean, do you oh, have oh, to oh, have a championship? Well, you know what? I mean, you know, as long as she does her part, you got to get help. Come on. If you're playing against a great team, which they were playing against, South Carolina is a great team. She's not going to win the game by herself. Everybody else has got to play well. Come on. We know that. Why are guys in the Hall of Fame? I mean, a lot of guys are in the Hall of Fame. Now, I know a lot of them, you know, um, you might not say the greatest of all time, but some of them, I mean, they got numbers. I mean, you know, uh, you look at Warren uh, Moon. What's that? Warren Moon. That's right. I mean, look at Warren Moon. I mean, Marino, when he played, come on. You know, they didn't have a full team. They didn't have a defense like a lot of the other guys have. And if you look at um, the great teams, they had a full team. Come on. Look at the great teams down the road. If you look at the old Steelers back then. Oh. 
Come on. Yeah, Bradshaw was was a, he was a great quarterback. I'm Every offensive player that was a skilled player, the Come two on. receivers, <laughs> one running back and the quarterback and the center yeah. are in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's right. And and look look at the defense. Come Ham, on. Ham, Lambert, on. Green, That's Blunt. Right. Yeah. I mean, and the other guys were they had the linebacker Elsie Greenwood. Uh, what well, I say uh, Russell, uh, he was there. Um yeah, Russell was there. Elsie Greenwood. Come on, man. You know, so they won, but you know, they had they had a team that won. And you know, they beat a lot of guys that were great players on the other team, but they got a full team of they're coming from every angle. <laughs> so you had them, if you look down through the the great players, I mean, um, they had great players. I mean, you know, with all due respect to um to Montana with with the Niners. Come on, they had they had, they had great people with them. Now he was a great player. But so that's why I think that um, I, I would say that, especially somebody that's just carrying a team, you got to get some help when you're playing it. When you get up to that, that elite level, now you could get them there, but to win it, you got to get help. Uh, that's that's what I would say. That would be my 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 uh, my Gary, opinion. Do you on think that. the people in Philly would look at Jason Kelsey differently if he didn't win in seventeen? I asked Angelo this. Now, now, uh, in fairness, yeah, pr probably because it kind of caps, you know, even though it wouldn't be saying he's a better player than they always, but because they did win it, it kind of caps things off. Uh, but, you know, come on. <laughs> Nick Foles just basically showed up, you know, playing out of his mind. And, and that's what's so crazy about that game. That guy was on greatness juice. Come on. He had to play his greatest game ever, and they still barely got out of there because that dog on Brady was still coming back, man. <laughs> I tell you, you know, and, and I mean, he was still coming back. And then threw for 500 yards, and they lost. Threw for 500 yards. And lost. And, and you know, we were walking off the field, and I was, um, I was out there, Brandon Graham, I said, Brandon, man, do you know how long it's going to be that people remember the play you made, dude? I said, dude, they are, you don't even realize. And he didn't. He's walking off. He doesn't realize the play he made, he will forever be remembered because of that play. And they don't make that play. They probably end up losing that game, man. Absolutely. That dog on Brady, whoo! But you need everybody else to play. And, and amazingly, you know, the defense really, come on, they, they made that one play. The defense. <laughs> it was it was totally, they made that play. And like you said, they got one stop. Yeah, one stop. Ball game. Because they weren't stopping them other than I that. I got to end it with this one here. Mm -hmm. So today, Andy Reid addressed finally Carson Wentz signing with the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. They gave him three and a half million bucks. And Xander says that here's a guy that's probably played a total of five years completely and he's made a hundred 150 million dollars i mean and andy says he's still got some ball left and yeah. he's looking forward you just mentioned nick Foles. could you see this mahomes goes down in the postseason this dude takes and andy reed takes him and they go all the way to the super bowl and they win it i'll tell you what man <laughs> hey I that's you, something that would... there's nobody on the planet who'd be rooting for that <laughs> wow Philadelphia. you know um the thing is, he's capable of it, but he is. You just have that way where he start, you know, he, he tries to force things, and if you do that, you turn the ball over. That's been his downfall. But you know, he, if he will just play way he's capable, the guy should be starting in the NFL. I'm going like, yep. dude, what is it you don't get? Don't force if it's not there. Don't force it. If you can see the guy's covered. Still try to throw it in there. Come on, you can't have that kind of mentality. You know what, Gary? I want my. I brought this up about him, and you tell me covering him. Yeah. I said prior to Los Angeles when he got hurt, that guy was playing like Josh Allen, the way he ran, the way he was physical. Yeah. Everything. And you were like, holy shit, this guy is something. He looked like Brett. I thought he looked like Brett Favre, uh -huh. the way he played. Yeah. Am I right to say this? After that L.A. game, the organization stopped running him, mm -hmm. made, tried to make him more of a pocket passer, 
right leaves, holding the ball too long, mm-hmm. patting the ball. Yeah. <laughs> sacks, fumbles. Yeah. Turnovers. All of that. Am I not watching the same thing going on with Jalen Hurts here? 22, he's electric. Mm-hmm. 23, yeah. he's not electric because they stopped running him and using the RPOs. Mm-hmm. Are we not seeing the same thing being done here to Jalen a little bit? Because people keep telling me that Kellen Moore is a great hire. Well, what exactly did he do with Dak in Dallas? Mm-hmm. I don't see it. I mean, well, the you organization know, has too much. Do you think they have too much say in the direction of how they're coaching and developing Jalen? Well, um, you know, I, I thought Jalen was really different than um, – than Carson because oh I think he's stronger mentally yeah but but what I mean is the way they utilize him they didn't really call plays for Carson to run they didn't run a lot of where they where they got the um the RPOs they didn't run a lot it was Carson just ad living and and that's what he held on to the ball a lot of times is when they were throwing the ball uh he he didn't really do a lot in the running game they didn't have him running you know with the RPOs and things they didn't have that uh, when he was here and of course, after he gets hurt, you know they're not going to be running RPO. So he did a lot of things where it was in the passing game where he would hold on to the ball. He, he's going to he's going to find something, and then he's scrambling, and he's and he would he would run, but it would be on plays where he was uh, in, in the midst of his scrambling, where he's trying to make something happen. He won't throw the ball away. There's nobody open, you know. And then he tries to force it in there, and, and then he would turn the ball over, or he gets hit and stripped. And he fumbles. So, um, you know, Carson was kind of different. And, you know, he just had a mentality where he's going out and saying, I'm going to find a way to win this game. And I know he's thinking that way. But you're not going to do it turning the ball over. I mean, you, you just – he, and that's why – I he, think he thinks he's Patrick Mahomes without the talent. I, I think that's <laughs> – you know, that's who he really plays like. And, and, and the thing about Mahomes is – he makes great decisions. He doesn't turn the ball over. Now, if he were turning the ball over, I'm sorry. He, we couldn't do that. But he makes good decisions. Carson does the same thing, only he forces it in. The guy's covered, forces it in and get the ball picked off. And now, you know, they're ready to get rid of you. So, um, but that's going to be interesting to see how that works out. <laughs> oh, I can't. Hey, I can't wait. Gary, I'll leave you with this. Did you envision any other way? that you would see Jason Kelsey, but in a WWE ring at Lincoln Financial <laughs> sitting there. And then there's Lane Johnson in that in that mask. Yeah. And he gets in there. I mean, <laughs> that was really a great event. It really was. And Philly yeah. embraced that event. I can't think of a better city. I mean, you know, I'll tell you what really did it. Another city, got another city you played in. Yeah. Detroit's a really great WWE city because yeah. I think the third, I think the third W um, uh, WrestleMania was there, and that was the one where Hogan slammed uh, Hulk or uh, Andre the Giant. Yeah, and that was a great one too. So I mean, I mean, it was just a really great event in Philadelphia, man. Yeah, WrestleMania they, they, Saturday. they did a great job. I'm glad they uh, they did that because it, it just uh, you know have them go out, have some fun with that and everything, and. Uh... <laughs> Hey, you Who know knows? what I told The Rock? I told The Rock, he goes, hey, I'm coming to Philly. And I go, hey, I, I'm, I'm doing heel stuff now. I go, hey, just take a shit on jail and they'll hate you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, he, he knows how to get the attention. He did. He, knows he how surely to get did. The attention. Gary, thank you so much, my friend. All right. Have a good one. <laughs> you got it. That's right. Hey, Gary Cobb, don't forget, Fox 29, Philadelphia. Get a chance to watch him. Then again, it's not that hard to take a shit on Jalen. Just go 15 turnovers. Hey, done. By the way, I can't believe how many morons are in here. You guys are morons. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. Hey, ECW was spectacular. Sills is obsessed with Hurts. No, 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 no. Ty, I'm obsessed with good players. <laughs> you, you, hey. You, you, okay. That's not fair, LJ. That's not fair. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's not fair. 
okay? And that's not nice, okay? Yeah, hey, Ty, can't go five minutes? You kidding me? It's easy. See Jalen rolling around at the uh, national championship game like he's a celebrity. Shit. Celebrity, my ass. <laughs> celebrity. No, he, he's like a B actor. You know, you go watch them off-Broadway plays. That's who he is. He's off-Broadway. And here's, watch this. Here's Patrick Mahomes. Here's Jay-Z. Here's Josh Allen. Here's Joe Burrow. And here's Jalen Hurts. Who? <laughs> oh, man. Who? <laughs> Come on, Ty. Who's Jalen Hurts? Oh, yeah, that's the guy that lost his job at Bama with all that talent. Don't worry. Hey, hey, Ty, here's how many games. As a matter of fact, I got a number here. How many games until he's replaced? Let's see. One, team, seven. How many games until Jalen Hurts is replaced? I wrote it down. What do you got? Over, under. I got a number here. How many num? Hey, how many? How many games until he's replaced? Brian says fifteen. Brian, fifteen. <laughs> Lorenzo, sixteen. <laughs> Hertz has at least two years left. One with Nick and one with new coach. So he's saying 34? Xander says 34 games. Let's see here. John, oh, this is this is crazier than I thought. Seven. Clay, 1,600. Yeah, okay. Shooter, four. <laughs> he's not getting replaced. Maybe four or five years. The same as Allen. Big Seals, am I wrong? Thinking the Eagles are at most a six-win team this season? Uh, you're more in line with me. Angelo thinks five. I think seven. So you're kind of in the middle. Okay? How we, because of this and on the backers, one of the worst drafting GMs as well, defensively. Y'all smoking meth. Laced with crack if you think Hertz is going to. So I'm going to go LJ says zero. Let's see. Here's what I got. I'm going to tell you after the timeout here. I'll tell you the time. I'll tell you after the timeout how many how many games I got Jalen Hurts being replaced. Xander's got 34. John's got seven. Brian's got 15. Lorenzo has 16. LJ has zero. How we will not let him out. 34. Jalen is not leaving Philly. He's a franchise quarterback. Idiotic people. Hey, dick train. You have to be an elite talent to be a franchise quarterback. You think Brock Purdy's a franchise quarterback? MVP season. Dak had a better year. Replaced by who this season? The greatness of small hands picket. <laughs> small hands picket. Rock them. Yeah. Okay. He goes, okay, talent, but the coaching staff will be the demise, unfortunately. Ooh, Taylor. Taylor. I'm going to tell you when I get back, we're going to reset. Hit the like button. Another a, another segment of clickbait by Cilio on a Monday. No, another reality 
comment by Big Sills. Even Dick Train knows him right. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show.